At 880 metres long and only 3 metres high, the Tame Valley Viaduct in Buckinghamshire won't be as grand or as iconic as the Con Valley Viaduct which is being constructed near to Denham. However, the way in which it is being constructed will make the viaduct groundbreaking, at least here within the UK. The viaduct will pass over a large floodplain to the west of Aylesbury that is situated between the A41 and A418. As you can imagine, trying to build a viaduct that is almost a kilometre long within a floodplain provides a whole host of challenges, which is part of the reason why the viaduct is being constructed in the way that it is, which we'll go into shortly. But before construction could begin on the viaduct, an access road had to be constructed, which had to be strong enough to allow cranes, ADTs and excavators to pass over it, but could not contaminate or block the flow of water. Therefore, a number of culverts had to be installed underneath the whole road to stop it becoming a dam. And in addition, the base of the road was made of a coarse stone, free of fine material, which would have otherwise reduced permeability and could contaminate the water. The road, which has been constructed to a height of approximately 1.8 metres, is a feat of engineering in itself, but is only temporary and will have to be removed once the viaduct is complete. Once the whole road was complete, work could then begin on the difficult task of trying to sink piles and excavate material for a pile cap within a floodplain. The pile cap is a steel reinforced concrete box which sits on top of the piles and is used as a base to support the piers. There are typically three piles underneath each cap which have been sunk to a depth of 45 metres to provide a solid foundation for the piers and ultimately the viaduct to rest on. Before earth could be excavated for the pile cap, a coffer dam had to be constructed using sheet piling which was driven into the ground. Then the earth was excavated to the top of the piles before a mould was placed inside the hole into which steel reinforcement was placed and concrete poured. The construction of the whole road and pile caps is interesting but not particularly groundbreaking. The groundbreaking part began when the construction of the viaduct itself commenced as it is thought that this will be the first time that a viaduct in the UK has been constructed almost entirely out of prefabricated sections. This includes the steel reinforcement cages for the pile cap, the concrete piers and concrete beams used to support the deck, as well as elements of the deck. The 68 3 metre tall concrete piers that each weigh 42 tonnes and 72 concrete beams that weigh 97 tonnes have been constructed 90 miles away on the Isle of Grain by Pacadar. It may seem odd to construct bridge sections which weigh almost 100 tonnes some 90 miles away by road but the prefabrication in a controlled environment has allowed the bridge design to be tweaked and improved which it is thought will save as much as 19,000 tonnes of concrete. In addition it will cut down on the number of lorry movements required with each beam transported on a single vehicle that would otherwise require as many as five truckloads of materials to be delivered to site. The 42 ton piers alone would have required the equivalent of around two and a half cement mixers worth of concrete to be delivered to site. In addition using prefabrication means less workers are needed on site which further reduces vehicle traffic in the area. The first piers were installed in June this year and so far 36 have been installed and with piers now installed the first beams are beginning to be placed on top. I was lucky enough to be invited on site as one of the beams was lifted into place. The lift was carried out using two crawler cranes, one with a lift capacity of 300 tonnes and another with a 350 tonne capacity. The cranes worked in tandem to first lift the beam from the transporter and then slew the beam into place on top of the piers. Each of the Viaduct's 36 spans will require two beams with spans of between 20 and 25 metres. It is hoped that one beam will be lifted into place each day, weather permitting. However, as with every lift, this depends on the wind speed, so on days with high winds, lifts may not be possible. Once installed, the beam will be post-tensioned to the adjoining beam, using short threaded bars that will be slotted into holes within the ends of the beams. 
Then, once a number of beams have been installed, the deck sections will be lifted into place on top of the beams. The bridge deck will be constructed using precast concrete panels, which will be covered in a final layer of concrete to form a continuous concrete deck, on top of which precast slab track sections will be placed. Although the piles, pile cap and top layer of the deck were poured in situ, it is the use of pre-assembly for the beams, piers and sections of deck and slab track that it is thought make the construction of this viaduct unique within the UK. So whilst it may not get as much attention as the Con Valley Viaduct, the Tame Valley Viaduct is no less important and is helping push the boundaries of UK construction.